Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webcast, part five of our Microsoft Dynamics 365 Deep Dive series. Today we will be, today we will be taking a deeper dive into insights for Dynamics 365. Before we get started, I ask that you please submit any questions you may have for today's presenter by typing them into the questions pane of the control panel in the upper right corner of your screen. You may submit your questions at any time during the presentation, and we will address as many as possible during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. I would now like to introduce Michael Hammonds, Director of Customer Experience at AKA Enterprise Solutions. Take it away, Mike. Great. Thank you, Jessica, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, so uh, I'll be your driver, so sit back, relax, and, uh, and enjoy the ride. Today we're talking about insights, and uh, if you're not familiar with insights, it is a part of the Microsoft Dynamics 365 um, suite of applications. And uh, today you're gonna, we're, we're narrowing in, this is part of our deep dive series, so what we're really looking at is kind of a subcomponent, if you will, of the overall Dynamics 365 platform. And, um, you know, I think today after seeing some of the things that we're going to uh, walk through today, you'll, you'll probably agree with, with our excitement and that we truly believe that Dynamics 365 is a game changer. Um, we're now really seeing a, an application that's able to uh, be a lot more proactive and increase your productivity uh, and improve your ability to service your customers, uh, I think, uh, in a very dramatic way. So. Insights, insights, insights. What is insights? Well, I guess on a somewhat unfortunate side, Microsoft has decided to, I think, overuse the word insights a little bit, and here's why. Uh, there's now insights powered by Inside View. This was previously called uh, customer insights, which now that's being repurposed for another application or another functionality. Um, so that's one. Okay, so now Insights, powered by Inside View, is an application that has been in this uh, service for quite a while now, probably a little over two years, maybe even three years, uh, and we're going to demonstrate that today. There's now also Social Insights, and this is part of the Microsoft Social Engagement Platform. Social Insights in particular is related to those components of social engagement that kind of fall within or embedded and integrated within the kind of the CRM portion of Dynamics 365. We now also have something new called Customer Insights. So we're going to cover that as well and kind of like it sounds, it's focused more on the customer. We also now have a new thing called Relationship Insights. <laughs> And that too is kind of sort of like it sounds, it's really more about the relationship or more of the activities that happen between our employees and our customers and prospects. And then we have organization insights. So uh, yet another insight. So these are the kind of the five insights that we currently have today in the platform. And uh, just uh, so that you'll have something for reference, you'll be able to download this uh, slide deck along with the recording that you'll be able to share with other folks. But it gives you a, a little bit more detail on what each of these insights are. Okay, so the insights from Inside View, Social, Customer, Relationship, and Organization Insights. And we're going to demonstrate each of these today. So let's first talk about social engagement, right? And social engagement is, is to kind of like it sounds, it, it's more focused on the social aspect. So today, you know, a, a lot of people, I think I saw a study recently that um, one in, or four in 10 people, so what, 40% of people get some level of daily news from their Facebook feed. <laughs> All right, that's, that's pretty significant, uh, considering that there's over a billion users uh, on Facebook. Uh, something like one in 10 Twitter users get their news off of, of Twitter. So. Uh, more and more we're seeing not only um, customer interactions happening, but we're also seeing um, purchasing happening and purchase decisions and purchase discussions happening, especially as people are leading up to the point where they're going to pull the trigger on buying a product or service, right? They're having these social conversations on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on their websites, things along those lines. 
So what we're going to do is is kind of cover the the pieces of social uh, uh, insights, and it includes what Microsoft calls social CRM, uh, social analytics, social engagement, and social listening. So these are all kind of all part of this. Um, social capability. So on the social CRM side of things, it's really mo focused on sales, marketing, and service. Right? How can we leverage social to act on buying signals? How can we listen to the conversations that are happening and either engage in those conversations uh, or react to those conversations? Marketing, how can we get more of our information out there? How can we get people to start talking about those uh, products and services that we may offer, talking about problems that our products and services uh, may help address, things along those lines. Social care. Uh, wasn't too long ago I ran into an issue at a hotel. I'll keep them nameless. Uh, but uh, I was having a bunch of issues with the front desk and wasn't really getting resolved, even after going to management. So I whipped out my trusty phone, fired off a, uh, a Twitter, uh, made sure that I at symboled their, uh, their Twitter handle, and uh, within about five minutes, I got a response uh, with a link uh, to a website as well as a phone number asking them, uh, and they were asking me to call. So that's the other thing, right? We're seeing more and more people uh, wanting their issues addressed via social media. And when we're in that social realm, we are expecting immediate responses, right? We don't want to wait around like, like we do on a phone sometimes, 20 minutes before your call is answered, you know, if you're lucky enough to get through. If you've ever happened to call your cable company or your telephone, you know, or your cellular phone company, right? Spent a lot, a lot of time on the phone waiting, um, you know. So uh, those are really the the key aspects that uh, these capabilities uh, will address. We'll see that we can have social insights within CRM, and that's exposed through both a CRM dashboard that we'll demonstrate, as well as you can put the social monitoring and social graphs on an individual record. So for in this case, AdventureWorks is a company, and we've got uh, part of a social listening and social events being tracked specifically for that company at the company record. Right? So real nice way for us to be able to filter in specifically to a, a customer and see exactly what's happening uh, in that uh, real-time or near-real-time aspect. So social engagement is really about engaging. So it's, it's, it's helping you react to those social conversations and be involved with, or in other word, engaged with those conversations. Uh, so whether that's on your own websites, your own social sites, uh, there's also a lot of community sites out there. You know, we're very active on community.microsoft.com. Uh, you know, we help answer questions that people have. Same thing on Power BI community on um, Dynamics 365 community. There's just a, a, a lot of now conversations happening out on those sites. And wouldn't it be nice if we can monitor those and then more importantly react and engage with uh, our prospects and customers there. Not only that, you can also set the system up to what we call automate triage and say if there is some negative references, I want to automatically create a case inside of CRM and then have that case notify my customer service people to then respond. Kind of like probably what happened when I posted my tweet about the issue I was having with that hotel. So they obviously had somebody monitoring those conversations and uh, and even though I sent this one direct, uh, you know, it's great the fact that, you know, very quickly they responded and uh, I was able to get my issue resolved. So uh, along with that, so that kind of leads us into that listening part, right? You know, before you can engage uh, you really should be listening. I, I, I got once advice from uh, uh, some sage advice from somebody um, in my history that said, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, when you when you're in a meeting, there's there's things that there's three things you should come with: two ears and a pen, <laughs> right? So uh, so listening is very important, right? Helping understand what those conversations are about, whether they're positive or negative. You know, it's good to engage on both ends of that spectrum. And then again, as we mentioned, uh, not only can you automatically create records in CRM, but you can also do other notifications, fire off an alert to uh, a manager, things along those lines. Analytics. Okay? Analytics are important, right, because we want to be able to analyze what's happening. Uh, how often are they happening? What types of things are happening? 
where are they happening, right? So the more that we understand the conversations and the content of those conversations, the better we can react to them, right? So uh, what you'll see within uh, part of what we're going to demonstrate today is Microsoft has this really unique ability to do sentiment analysis, meaning is this conversation a positive conversation, is it a neutral conversation, or is it a negative conversation? So based upon keywords and phrasing within that conversation, the analytics engine is able to figure out if it's positive or negative. And it does a pretty good job of it. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Um, also, again, you know, location analysis. Say if you're at a trade show and you happen to be seeing some conversations happening, wouldn't it be nice to know if those conversations are, are happening either right there in that building or very near that building? So that you can reach out and say, hey, I'm, I'm at the trade show too. You know, perhaps we can meet, buy a cup of coffee, so help solve your issue, things along those lines. So what you'll see, I'm uh, just going to, uh, I put in some slide uh, uh, screenshots for you in the slides so that you would, again, have some content for reference purposes. But what you're seeing there is the social engagement application, uh, and it has different capabilities that we're going to go through, like conversation analysis, symptom analysis, location analysis, where's the information uh, coming from, right? So uh, let's go and jump into our first demonstration. So we're going to... Uh, Okay, not sure why. That's that's weird. Okay, odd. My mouse was uh, causing all those weird sounds. So let's go in and start with uh, social engagement. Okay, so we're going to go into. Uh, in this case, this is my citizen engagement dashboard, uh, and so. Uh, we're going to start with the the social aspect of this. Okay, so I'm going to go to my citizen social dashboard, and what this is doing, this is surfacing those conversations, those uh, social conversations that are happening on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Uh, well, not yet LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Facebook, on websites, so blogs, um, on Instagram, and there's a few others that it will monitor as well. And so you can see within the context of this, I can see where they're happening. I can see how many posts there are. Uh, is it trending up or down? Are they negative? Are they positive? Are they neutral? What's the language even that these conversations are having? So this is a, one of those unique capabilities of this platform is that it can do multiple language uh, sentiment analysis. And so uh, I think there's now upwards of 19 languages or will soon be 19, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, so interesting that you can, if you're a more of a global organization and you have uh, places or locations in, you know, um, Spain, France, Germany, Italy, places like that, you'll be able to do the same thing regardless of the language that they're in. You know, uh, here's the conversations that are happening over time, and then where are they happening? Facebook uh, seems to be the most positive ones. Twitter seems to be the most negative ones. It monitors video, so uh, Vimeo and YouTube, as well as blogs. But let's say I want to drill into this uh, capability. So I can tap on uh, any of the charts there. And now what that's going to do is that's going to take me to the dashboard um, or the social engagement application. Right? So we can see here that you know there seems to be a fair amount of negative conversation. So maybe I want to drill into that. And I want to see, oh, well, first of all, let me kind of give you an idea of what the flow here is. So here's kind of your overflow, overview, right? What's the overall? Um, sentiment, where the conversation's happening, looks like most of them happening in the US. You can narrow it down to a particular area or location. So this is, uh, if you are in public sector, you can say just do it for my city, my state, things along those lines. Um, what posting types, sources, the authors, the key phrases. But we can then drill into and look specifically at the conversations that are happening. So we see that you know measles is a big topic in this particular one. Uh, and then we see the details related to conversations. Here's the details related to sentiment. And it looks like you know we've been having a lot more negative than positive. So it's showing that trending information. Uh, again, showing you which social platforms have what type of conversations. Where are these conversations happening? And then a drill down into the actual um, sources, where are they coming from? So let's say that 
for example, I want to just drill into some of these negative conversations. Okay. Now I, that filtered everything. You see the, the chart changed, and now it's just showing me the details of those negative conversations. Right. So let's say you, I want to start to see the actual conversation. So I hit the post flag there, and now I see information related specifically to those actual conversations, right? So here are my Twitter conversations. If I scroll down, if more of them were negative on Facebook, I'd be seeing the Facebook posts here. So that now allows me to see exactly what's happening, what is the, what is the actual conversation, who is it from, and then there's my sentiment rating. But you know what? I can also, right from within here, I can reply. Uh, I can retweet. People love having their messages retweeted. Um, it's just kind of one of those social aspects of being a human being. Uh, I can like it. People love to have their messages liked. Uh, and or I can post a link to them. I can send them a link specifically to a website or a page that might help them with that issue. Okay. Not only that, I might be able to, you know what, I want to assign this perhaps somebody in my organization to address. So I can do that. Or I can even link this into my CRM application itself. Right? So in this case, you know, I have multiple um, systems linked up to this in this case. And so I want to create um, maybe this is going to be a case, right? So a citizen request is an issue. Uh, issue logged by a uh, citizen, okay? And when, as soon as I hit create, that's actually now creating a record inside of CRM. Think about that. It's taking the contents out of this conversation and now it's creating a case. And now based upon your workflow and your details and information there, uh, you'll see that it will show up here. And now uh, we can use the rest of the Dynamics 365 capabilities to uh, go in and, and um, help address this particular issue. So you see here, this is, yep, it was it was created. Now if I want to see that actual record inside of CRM, I just click on that link, and you'll see that, boom, it'll take me to uh, that particular issue as soon as that screen decides to render. And uh, da, da, da. well, we'll let that go here for a few seconds. Um, and so you'll see those details. Pretty awesome, I think. Uh, and, you know, so think about that from a productivity perspective. You know, I'll, people do have the ability to monitor today. Like, uh, for example, I use Sprout Social as my kind of social engagement tool. Uh, some people use, uh, what is it, Hootsuite. You know, others might have a, like a Marketo that has some limited social capabilities, things along those lines. Um, so if you're using those third-party tools that are costing you money, you now can use social engagement because it's part of the Dynamics 365 platform and uh, now have more of a single tool, a single platform that uh, allows you to do both the social aspects as well as the standard aspects of, of your business. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll uh, just come back to that. So let's say now that um, I wanted to uh, go in and take a look now at the another aspect that's been integrated into this. Okay, so maybe I'm more on the sales side and and I am starting to do some more of my selling through social interactions. So we can go into the social selling assistant dashboard. And what the social selling assistant dashboard is it takes the social insights and the social engagement capabilities that we just walked through and now is exposing them. It's taking all that content and based upon your interaction that you have as a specific user, is going through all those conversations and it's bubbling up the things that are most likely relevant to you and your interaction types. Okay, think about that. Let me say that again. It's most relevant, bubbling up, most relevant conversations that you in particular have uh, and from your and that information coming from your email uh, interactions as well as your CRM interactions. So right from here, if I want to start my day, I see here's my activities, here's I got a few leads, uh, there's some opportunities, and now here's kind of those social things that have been bubbled up. And right from here, I can share that information, or share it with someone else. Uh, I can again reply, re, re, uh, retweet it. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do a retweet there. And uh, and then go ahead and pick my, that's my social handle there. 
and I'm going to retweet that. Boom. So right from within CRM, didn't have to go to another application, it's right there on my dashboard. I can interact socially through my own social channels. So each user typically will set up their own social channels. So if you want people to, to respond as themselves, or you can set up your own corporate entities and then allow them to reply through, uh, through your own corporate entity. So all depends on how you want to do that, right? So then once I hit done, boom, moves it off my task list, and now on to the next one, and I can now address the next one, right? So I think that's uh, pretty sweet. So uh, with that, let's see if uh, my record showed up. No, it's still kind of waiting to download. So uh, anyway, the record is in there. Uh, let's see if we can get to it here real quick. We'll go to, uh, ah, forget it. We'll, we'll move on. Murphy likes to pop his head up every now and then. All right. So on to our next insight. So our next insight is insights powered by Insight View. So uh, hopefully most of you've already, if you if you've had CRM Online now most recently, I think in the last since at least the 2016 release, on premise has the ability to use insights, uh, and this is really a powerful capability. Also a big huge productivity boost, uh, and I'll show you why in a few minutes. Um, but I use it pretty much every day. Uh, and so what it does is it helps you qualify and prioritize your prospects, help you find more people within an organization that you're dealing with, uh, understand issues and buzz that's happening about that particular organization or person, stay on top of news, events, buzz, all that fun stuff. Um, and then uh, also uh, going uh, into and uh, helping you uh, with uh, the responses that um, you want with those individuals okay so some of the new things you're going to see a, a new and I do I think uh, very improved user experience uh, I think they've streamlined a lot they made it look a lot prettier a lot easier to find out the information that you're looking for uh, you now can set up preferences both organization-wide as user-wide some custom field mapping so now you can take fields that are in this insights or slash inside view application and map it to certain fields within your CRM um, and then uh, a couple other things that are in there. So with that, we're going to jump into the insights demonstration. Okay. So let's go to my insights here. And uh, we're going to start with, uh, let's start with the, a, a particular record, right? So we're going to start at, I think I've got a uh, Ford Motor Company in here. So when I go to Ford Motor Company, I'll see insights exposed within this company record. And you will see all of the, not only social information, but in case you're not aware of this, what insights does is it goes out and crack, collects and grabs information from all kinds of public sources. Uh, and so you see here, if I scroll down a little bit, uh, you know, normally you can kind of see the, there'll be a, like a little icons listed here, uh, and that might be in the old version, but places like Reuters, Hoover's, the free part, um, just web searches, you know, there's something like, I don't know, 40, 50 or more sources that they look for information to bubble it up again inside of your CRM application. So you can see that here's the most recent buzz, but here's part of that new, um, new look and feel. Okay, I can add a watch list. What that does, if I add that to my watch list, I'll get a daily um, email of news and information that it finds about Ford. And so that's great if I'm maybe working a deal with Ford uh, and I want to stay on top of news and information, you know, a new plant going in, um, you know, maybe a, a, new, uh, a new brand being created, a new, a, new mo uh, a, a new vehicle coming out, soon things along those lines to help me stay on top of my uh, relationships with my people there. Uh, we can synchronize uh, with our account information. Uh, we can edit it and we can flag it. But here's where we're going to go in and view more here. And now you'll see that it's this is again part of this new UI. So this is brand new to this update here. And so now I see you know a lot more information in the uh, insights part. Notice here that it too is social. So if I wanted to send this, I send a link to somebody. So I want to send my contact a link. I can do that. I can post it on my Facebook, I can post it on my Twitter, I can post it on my LinkedIn, 
Or if you're using Yammer, which hopefully you are, I can also post that to my Yammer group. And if you've got external groups, you can post it to those as well. Right? So I think that is fantastic. Again, you know, helps me stay on top of information, details, news, you know, stock prices, stock market things. Uh, I think it's just amazing. And then uh, allowing you to have those interactions is, is really pretty awesome. Then we go into the research tab, right? Now here's things that are more specific, like the financials and the latest income statements. Um, who are their competitors? Isn't that great? You know, okay, we all know who Ford competes with, right? So that's pretty simple. I don't necessarily need this to do that. However, uh, if it was a smaller organization, wouldn't that be great for me to be able to find out who their competitors are and maybe I can go and try to find and do business with some of their competitors or some of their subsidiaries, things along those lines, right? Um, Here's the other great piece. Uh, let's go to family tree first. Uh, so let's say that, yeah, we're trying to break, our, break into Ford Motor Company, and we want to see what other organizations are part of Ford Motor Company. So we can see here there's a list of all of their subsidiaries. So think about that now from a prospecting perspective. I now have at my fingertips a lot more organizations that I can attempt to find a uh, relationship with and do business with. I like that, right? I think that's awesome. But here's now the other piece where I find it, you know, where kind of the rubber hits the road is we can come into here and we can see details about contacts. So right now, these are all contacts that are currently not inside my CRM. This is publicly available information that is being surfaced inside. But you know what? I actually want Mark Fields inside my database. So I hit the little icon there. And now what it's doing is it's grabbing all of that content that it has about Mark. And it's now pushing that inside of my CRM application, right? Think about that. How much typing did I have to do to put in Mark Field, CEO, president, director, his email, if it's in there, uh, and uh, any of the other pertinent details that we have? One click and multiple fields are added and updated. You know, I can also do multiple. So if I wanted to come in and click a couple more, you can see I can add more people to my database, right? So that's how simple it is for me now to go out and find new prospects. I, that's why I use this a lot. I can go out and find out who is the CEO, who's the CFO. Uh, and this works great for most size companies. Maybe the smaller ones, especially the private where there's a lot less information, you're not going to find um, as much detail. But uh, it certainly does, you know, uh, to me, a more than adequate job of doing this, especially when it comes to uh, saving me time and effort in getting that information into my database. Okay. Now, here is another um, new part of Insights, and it's called the Discovery Center. And so I go to Insights Discovery Center, and now it kind of gives me this more of this view to say go in and try to find specific con uh, organizations. So maybe you know I've already searched in my database. I know there's a few that aren't in there. Um, I can go in and I can start to do uh, specific research here. So you can see here that it's kind of showing me what's happening. We updated and created uh, those contacts in my database. Uh, so far I don't have anybody on my watch list. Uh, here's the last two that I went with. The little check mark means that it's a, actually a and now has is synchronized with CRM. But let's look for a smaller company. Uh, I'm out of Atlanta so uh, MailChimp is one of those organizations that are based here in Atlanta. And notice that well you know, if, if you're not familiar with MailChimp, it's, a, it's an email marketing thing, um, but it's actually designed by a group called the Rocket Science Group. So I can now take, take that, see, see all I had to do was MailChimp, I didn't have to know that there was a company name out there, and boom, now I see details about that organization, the different contacts that we have that are um, uh, by role or by function, right? So if I wanted to see just the uh, uh, sales folks, we can just, tap on that and it's going to filter to just show me the sales folks and uh, see then those additional insights. So from here I can add this record to CRM, I can add it to my watch list and what's nice is that let's say that maybe you know maybe this person Ben Chestnut there recently left and went to another organization. You can actually flag that, tell them what the issue is and usually either the same day or within a day to at most they will actually go in and update that information for you. <laughs> Think about that. Now you can really, truly keep on top of keeping your data clean much more effectively and efficiently than you could by doing all this stuff manually. Okay. So those are uh, some of the really great 
capabilities in the new insights. All right. So let's now go and back to our slide deck and go into the next insights, which is going to be relationship insights. Okay. And relationship insights consists of, again, kind of, you know, these little subcomponents, if you will. Uh, and those are auto capture, email engagement, relationship analytics, and relationship assistant. Okay? So let's talk a little bit about what those are before I go in and demonstrate them. Um, so auto capture is, as long as you hook this up to your exchange, uh, then, and that's a very simple process, it will now actually start to track all of the conversations and all of the people uh, associated with them in your exchange and in your inbox, right? So it no longer is just relegated to those that you specifically track, assuming you use the Outlook functionality where you track and CRM, right? You track your email and CRM. This now will bubble up other emails that are pertinent and let you know it within context of that CRM record, okay? I find that extremely valuable, and I'll demonstrate that in a few minutes, okay? And then from there, so uh, you'll see where you can actually, uh, in the system here, you'll see there'll, there'll be a little hyperlink uh, inside your uh, inside your little uh, message there that you can then track from, track that email inside CRM. Okay, so it'll actually be a permanent part of your CRM record. So uh, what else is it? Email engagement. So I know one of the questions that people most often asked is, when I send an email to a prospect, will it track when it was opened? Or will it track anything that I put in there, like a hyperlink to maybe, you know, some more back to our website or to some other website? And the answer has always been, unfortunately, no. Not anymore. <laughs> we now have the ability to track when people open their email, when they reply to that email, and when they click on any link, or if you set it up, also, if you sent them attachment, did they open that attachment? <laughs> think about that. Now I've got instant visibility. So think about this. How often have you sent an email and it kind of goes off into the ether sphere and you never really know what happens to it? Did it get there? Did it get bounced? Did they delete it? Did it go in a spam box? You know, those types of things now, you're getting a lot more visibility into it and you can now even act upon those things. And I'll show you what that means too in a minute. Not only that, let's say if you happen to be using this on a mobile device, so it is mobile friendly, mobile capable, I'll show you that too, um, it will track if that person opened it up on you know, their iPhone and where were they when they opened it up. Okay, now I know some people might think that's creepy and all, but guess what? That's the world we live in today. It's kind of like any time I go in to search inside of you know, one of those search engines, um, it seems to somehow know what I'm searching for before I even finish um, typing uh, you know, the whole phrase, right? So th it's just the, the world we live in, you know, it, it happens. Uh, and so, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, how comfortable are you with it? But for me, bottom line, I think it helps um, establish those relationships and see what's going on kind of behind the scenes. So the email engagement, not only does it allow you to send it and track all those things, but it'll start to figure out and tell you when the best time to deliver that message is, and or it can also set it up to delay delivery. Now, in Outlook, I know you, you're able to do that. It's kind of buried in the menu structures, but you know this is nice. It's right there front and center. I'll show you how easy it is to uh, delay the uh, sending and or um, uh, if, depending on the data, you know, it might bubble up and tell me, the, like I had one uh, yesterday that said, uh, you know, the best time to send this email would actually be at 11 a.m. Because um, what it does is it looks at the past history, sees the past interactions, the, the past time that those people interacted, and kind of through uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning, it actually says, hey, you know, based upon past history, here's where I think is the best time or most likely that you're going to get this thing opened. Okay? Um, also, you can set up your own reminders now inside of the application as well, and it'll then be a part of your CRM record. Uh, relationship assistance is part of this as well. So I'm going to show you the you you saw that when I first went into my dashboard, but you're going to see these little what we call cards, uh, and those are also really nice and helpful. And and then um, you'll also be able to uh, get some analytics. 
Now, this is not available yet. This is the part that I, I think will be probably post this upcoming release, but I don't know, don't have any details on it. Um, Microsoft's kind of keeping this one close to the vest, but what you'll be able to do is actually see uh, all, a list of all your opens, your clicks, your bounces, the, the interactions that you have, the over date and time, what types, uh, other interactions that other people in your organization are happening, all in this nice little kind of dashboard view. And you can see, kind of see this, this is at an opportunity level, right? So now specific to an opportunity, specific to an account, specific to a contact, it'll show you all those things. And beautiful, it even works on my smartphone. So uh, you can now interact with those right there on your phone as well. Tablet obviously uh, is a part of that, okay? So let's go in and show our relationship assistant. So our relationship assistant, uh, we're gonna go back to our dashboard, first of all, and uh, the first one is going to be uh, my CSR social dashboard. I think that one will work. All right, so what you're gonna see here, you know, most of us have seen that what's new, but now look what's coming in, ooh, magically coming in, and this is where the part of that relationship assistance is now going through and looking at not only what's happening inside of CRM, but also what's happening inside of your CR, uh, of your email, right? So you can even say, here's where one of those, I, an email I sent earlier was opened, right? So I get that notification right there on my dashboard. Uh, I can open up that particular email. I can open up that contact record. Uh, I can snooze the record. So maybe I want to address this, you know, in, in five more minutes. Um, then I can go on to the next one or I can close it out. Right, so you really have just this nice ability to see all of these interactions that are happening about the people and companies inside of your database. And or if you happen to be in public sector, your citizens, your constituents, whatever the case may be. If you're in healthcare, it would be your patients, all that type of information. All right, so let's go in now and take a look at a particular contact record. So I'm gonna go in and uh, I think Alan here is one of my contacts where I've had some interactions with, and so we'll see the details bubble up from a relationship insights perspective on his contact record. Okay. So we see kind of the, just like what we saw on the dashboard, it's now going to kind of come in there at the top. Uh, let's see if it's going to come in at the top. Uh, maybe, let's try Alan S then. Maybe it's Alan S. Uh, and then, um, just like you can from the dashboard, you now see these uh, these things filtered uh, directly uh, to the contact record that you're on or to the uh, a company record that you're on. Um, so, well, all right. So, Alan, uh, all right. So, yeah, there it is. So, right there. So now showing up. Here's an email requesting a file replacement of your laptop. Up, so that bubbles up, I can snooze it, I can open up the email, things along those lines. Okay. But now, if we go to, I'm going to go to my uh, activities here, and we're going to see a list of the activities that's been happening. And now notice here is an email that was sent out earlier, and this is one of those emails that uh, I said I wanted to track. So I'm going to open up the details here, and we now see, now this is the email that I sent, okay? And over here, this is part of that email engagement of the Relationship Insights part. So right now, it's following. If I want to turn off following, I can hit the don't follow. Here's where I can actually set a reminder. So not only can I set a reminder, I can put some business context around it. If I don't receive a reply by a certain period, notify me. If the email is not opened by, give me a reminder. Uh, just remind me, period, anyway, because I want to follow up regardless of whether I know he opens it or not. Okay, So it gives you some nice little contextual information there. Notice here that it's showing you the opens, any replies, any clicks, any links. Uh, opened it on his Windows device a couple times, it looks like. So real nice there that I can see now that interaction. Okay? Uh, if I wanted to, let's go in. We're going to create uh, a brand new one. And so we'll just go create a new email. And you'll see that there's a couple other little options here, or one other option here on the side. Uh, so uh, here's now where you can send later. If I hit send later, uh, again, it'll give me kind of a, uh, you know, a, 
uh, an ability to set a certain date and time. This is where you'll also see a message. If, it, if it's got enough data to say when it thinks the best time to send that is, you'll see a little message show up here. And that's where that one was that I mentioned earlier. It said the best time to send this email is at 11 a.m. And then there's where you can set your reminders. And then I definitely recommend that you start using the templates. Those are new and improved. Uh, oops, let's go. You got to uh, put in the person first. So let's put in myself. Uh, ta -ta. And then uh, make sure that you're using those templates because it saves a lot of time and effort uh, when and uh, increases your productivity because you don't have to type all that stuff. So I hit select, that's my favorite one. Boom, puts in the template and we're off and running to the races. Pretty sweet, right? Uh, let's now show you that on our mobile device. So I'm going to uh, just start with, I think, my, uh, my iPad here. And so we're going to uh, open up the iPad. See, we are cooking with gas here. This is not smoke and mirror. You can see this is this is my real iPad. All I'm doing is I'm kind of projecting the screen uh, onto my laptop. Let's turn that there. And so here, you know, most of us, if if you've turned on the uh, the mobile capabilities, this is the mobile client. Um, but here's where those new capabilities are. You'll see there's a nice little new button up here. So if I tap on that. It's actually going to show me some of that relationship insights capabilities. And so here now, this is the relationship uh, insight card. And so there is, oh, there's an issue that it detected in email, uh, getting an unusual error. So notice here, I can create a case right from that. I can open up the email. There's another issue with some graffiti in the park. Uh, let's see if we scroll up. How about this? There's been no activity with a certain case, right? Keeps track now of that. Uh, how about if uh, some of the activities with contacts? Hey, you haven't touched Daisy since April 5th. You haven't touched Taryn since April 5th. You haven't touched Andrew. So think about that from a productivity perspective and more importantly, a customer experience perspective. Now the system is helping you stay on top of all those things, right? And so right from there, uh, you'll see if I swipe white, I can uh, set it first news, I can dismiss it. if I swipe left, uh, or if I tap on it, uh, it'll actually uh, take me to, and I can open up the record right from there, or I can send an email right from there. So real nice, easy, finger-friendly interactions. I showed that on my tablet. works exactly the same on my Android or an uh, iPhone. Uh, and so, you know, you get those same awesome capabilities, whether you're on a smartphone or whether you're on a web browser in a traditional laptop or PC. So we've got a couple more insights here, organization insights. And so this is another big asset people have, uh, wanted to know. You know, how active are people in my system? What are they doing in the system? Are they creating records? Are they updating records? Are they deleting records? Do I have plugins that are causing any issues? Things along those lines. So that's really what organization insights is for. This is a new capability, uh, currently online only, but it allows you to even customize these dashboards monitor for adoption and usage. You notice that certain departments got lower usage than others. That gives you a key to go in and have conversations with that department, understand why aren't they using it, how can you maybe perhaps tweak the system to get better engagement from your end users. Monitors storage and performance. Okay, So it gives you a lot more detail on the storage capabilities than having to go through the admin portal through Office 365. Helps you troubleshoot, also helps you understand if you do any integrations through OData, shows you the performance levels there. So with that, we're gonna go into, and I'll show you where you can access your organization insights. So from with here, we go into our sales, and then we go into settings. See, that's where, you know, it's not that insights, it's this insights. <laughs> so we go to our organization insights. And now you'll see a lot of rich information specific to my tenant. Okay, so this is each by tenant. And so it, just in this two date period, I can go far as far back as uh, 90 days. So if I wanted to, you know, just maybe see in the last uh, two months, I'll just pick that. Uh, boom. I don't know if there's going to be any more data, but you'll see the timeline will change. 
Uh, certainly the API calls to change. Uh, notice how many plugins have fired, so that type of thing. So really gives you a lot of detailed information to help you stay on top of your CRM system. So there's your most active users, your top plugins. If I want to go into active usage, then it drills down into these other areas. So let's see who's kind of on the active winner list. Mm -mm -mm. So going to our active usage list, system jobs, etc. So that just breaks down each of those in a little bit more detail. You can also get to a smaller version of this through the dashboard itself. Uh, so if I want to go into, uh, oh yeah, see look, your most used entities, uh, just awesome, which pages are loading. You know, we, we've been able to do this kind of stuff, but you had to write some JavaScript, put it on each of the pages, uh, collect it into, you know, an Azure store somewhere. It just took a lot to be able to do that. So now it's actually built into the system, which I think is, you know, even more awesome. Uh, so let's go in. We'll go to our sales. We'll go into our dashboard. And then you'll see that, um, and this little dashboard I'll show you is kind of pre-built. Uh, by Microsoft, so you don't have to go in and, and actually create it yourself. It will um, show you at least a summary of your organization insights. Okay, so go to our dashboards. And then we'll go to organization insights dashboard. So click on that and we'll see our organization insights dashboard. Uh, yeah, maybe I didn't turn. Yeah, I didn't turn that one on. So anyway, it's in there, uh, and uh, it's just a subset of the of the one that we just showed. Okay. So let's now go back to our presentation, and we've got one last insights here, and that is customer insights. Now this one is you know, very clearly still preview. Uh, I would call it probably more beta or probably verging on alpha. So I wouldn't get too excited about this just yet. You know, we don't know exactly when it's going to be officially released, but it is part of preview, so you can access it. You can kind of go in and check it out. I, I would not recommend it um, as of yet. Here's a little link down at the bottom where you can go in and set it up and configure it for your environment online only at this point. Uh, but it basically is a dashboard that allows you to take information from multiple different data sources and kind of combine them into one single view. Now, you know, it's kind of like Power BI, Power BI but it's doing a little bit more on the analytics side uh, from a machine learning perspective. Uh, so I'm going to go in and I'll show you the one dashboard that we have that I started creating, and again, because it's uh, uh, a, uh, I would say, you know, beta, let's just call it, instead of a preview, um, you know, there's not a lot there to it. It took a few steps to get it set up, so it's just not really where it needs to be as of yet, uh, and so that's the long one. Let's go to, I think, here, and I'm going to go to my customer insights, and so boom. So there it is. This one is, you can see, this is based on a particular account. Here's our sales. Uh, and, and this one, I, we're doing some banking uh, demonstrations. So how many deposits on average? How many uh, do they have? What, how many withdrawals? Uh, how many sales or how much um, um, money did they have in their accounts last year? A little info card, kind of where things play on their role perspective, drill down information. Uh, if I go, you'll see that here I've got uh, another one for contacts, but didn't really do anything with that one. Um, so I think it's got really great potential. You know, we'll see as this gets fleshed out a little bit more, but it's really exciting in that it takes very easily data from other sources and kind of combines them into this particular view. Yeah. So with that, we're going to finish out the presentation and open it up to questions, Q&A. So, Jessica, how are we doing uh, on any questions? Okay, um, yeah, the first question we have here is, is there extra cost for this service? Ah, okay, so if you are a Dynamics 365 subscriber, there are no additional costs as of today. However, 
the customer insights, there probably will be additional costs. And there are some transaction limits, but they're really high, like 100,000 transactions um, you get included and uh, or 100,000 contacts, things along those lines. So um, if you go over a certain threshold, there may be additional costs, but um, everything I demonstrated today uh, is included in your baseline subscription with the fact that at some point, once things get out of preview, there might be some additional charges. Great. And then there's one last question. Um, is any is anything that you demonstrated today available for on-premise? Uh, so on-premise is a little bit more challenging. Uh, Insights, powered by Inside View, is available now to on-premise customers. I believe you have to be on 2016 or above, though. Uh, however, if you're on an earlier version, there is a paid uh, version of that. So I think $25 per user per month, you can add those capabilities to your on-premise solution. Um, the other parts, the relationship cards, there's only three cards out of like 20 different card types that will work on premise. And um, that's, that's it off the top of my head, but there are some limitations for on-prem, um, but you'll get to take advantage of at least uh, to me the, the really nicer ones like uh, customer insights, once it's ready and available, you'll be able to do uh, some of the relationship insights and then inside view um, are good enough for on-prem. Great, thank you, Mike. I believe that's um, all the questions we have today. Yep, so thank you. Uh, just as next steps recommended, um, I highly encourage you to either set up these features in your own environment, or if you don't want to mess with your own environment, set up a trial. It's easy You can go out to the Dynamics 365 website, you can start a 30-day trial, you can turn pretty much most of these things on, uh, as in fact, yeah, I think you can turn them all on. So, uh, so that's a great way for you to get your hands on. Um, or call us, and we're happy to schedule a deeper dive on any of these particular areas and help you understand how you get them set up, how you get them configured, um, you know, what's customizable, what isn't, et cetera, and uh, get you rocking and rolling in your own setup. Uh, then one last thing, resources. I gave you some resource links here to each of those capabilities. And so with that, uh, feel free to reach out to me. And with that, I think that concludes uh, our session today. So again, appreciate everybody taking the time out to join us.